I'm going to show you how oil prices, inflation, gas globally are still Joe Biden's fault. I understand it's now a global problem, but that's because the USA started the ripple with a man named Joe Biden that now rippled through the world. So everybody pay attention. One, you push the green bad deal and this is going to happen. What's the green bad deal? Well, it goes a little something like this. Listen to what he has to say about fossil fuel. Are you ready to commit to the responsible phase out of yeah. fossil fuel production as part of your yes. administration? Well, look, we got to go to zero emissions, man. Zero emissions. Zero emissions. And, 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 and we can. It's within our oil hub. The answer is yes. The answer is yes. And, 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 and so that, that means the responsible phase out of fossil fuel production That's in this country? Have you, have you had a chance to see my plan? Responsibly phasing out fossil fuel is part of the green bad deal. So don't let him tell you he wasn't doing that before he even ran. He was talking about this. As he ran, he talked about this. And then as soon as he got into the presidency, was installed there, he immediately started signing paperwork to make true. When someone tells you something, believe them. What did he do next? He stopped the oil pipelines. He stopped the fossil fuel production. He did what he said. And it went a little something like this. Even our Australians, Dionanda, understand what's going on, but part of our own people right here have no clue. But first, let's nice. check in with the leader of the free world who is blaming everything and everyone for his administration's many failures, including the US's energy crisis. Remember, the US was a net energy exporter under President Trump, but under Joe Biden, who in his first day in office cancelled the permit for the Keystone Pipeline, well, there's an energy crisis. Biden loves to blame external factors beyond his control for this self-inflicted mayhem. But what is happening is precisely what he said would happen during the 2020 presidential campaign. He promised to slash emissions and kill fossil fuel projects. Would there be any place for fossil fuels, including coal and fracking, in a Biden administration? No, it would be, we, would, we would work it out. We would make sure it's eliminated. No more drilling on federal lands. No more drilling, including offshore. No ability for the oil industry to continue to drill, period. I guarantee you. We're going to end fossil fuel. What about, say, stopping fracking and stopping yes. new pipeline infrastructure? Yes. And, 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 exactly. and No more, no new fracking. We are going to get rid of fossil fuels. I've argued against any more oil drilling or gas drilling on federal lands. No one's going to build a coal-fired plant again, and we're going to get rid of the ones we have now. Have a transition from the oil industry, yes. Would you be willing to sacrifice some of that growth even knowing potentially that it could displace thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of blue collar workers in the interest of transitioning to that greener economy? The answer is yes. Well, elections have consequences, as do mad green policies, something Australia is going to find out. But back to President Biden, who this week was blaming what he calls the Putin tax for soaring gas and food prices. I understand Americans are anxious, and they're anxious for good reason. I was raised in a household when the price of gasoline rose precipitously. It was the discussion at the table. It made a difference when food prices went up. But we've never seen anything like Putin's tax on both food and gas. At least he was lucid there when he was <laughs> lying through. But you can't say that about his performance on the Jimmy Kimmel show, which started badly and got worse. Here is Biden indulging in some mask <coughs> theatre by wearing a mask when he's all by himself and then taking it off when he approaches the host. Uh, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Biden then went on some bizarre rant about biracial couples on TV and bragged that his administration had done a lot of great stuff. They're just bad at communication. Oh, I'm serious. You turn on the TV, look at the ads. When's the last time you saw biracial couples on TV? When's the last time you saw the way, I mean, people are selling products, they do ads to sell products. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, does he think it's 1965? I mean, maybe he seriously does think it's 1965 because these days ads are full of biracial families. But when he wasn't making a fool of himself on late night TV, Biden was indulging in reckless rhetoric. This is what he said about his political opponents just days after a Supreme Court justice appointed by President Trump had an attempt on his life. Every once in a while, something you learn makes you viscerally angry. Like if you had the person in front of you, you'd want to pop them. No, I really mean it. 
<laughs> Don't you just love the unity that he's brought, the prosperity that he's brought? Uh, that's what happens when you order a president through the mail. Mm -mm. It makes me just want to pop him. I just sometimes I want to hit somebody. What a decent and nice guy. He denies the existence of his grandchild. He ruined people's jobs, their careers, their fossil fuels. He raked up the inflation. And now he wants to punch people. That is what we hired him for. Now, what else did he do to raise your gas prices? He botched the Afghanistan withdrawal. When Putin saw how bad that went, China started sharpening their forks and knives. Russia was looking around going, hey, we got an idiot at the wheel. Let's go play. This emboldened Russia to start a war with Ukraine. We lost Russian oil. We get 20 to 25% of our oil that way. So imagine losing 20 to 25% of your income. What would that do to you financially? Well, that's what we're doing with our oil situation. And inflation then shot up along with gas prices. Things are going bad at the exact same time. Stock market going down and interest rates for homes are going up, which means housing prices are gonna plummet soon as well. But what's their big answer? Buy an electric vehicle, hello? If you just buy an electric vehicle, you don't have to worry about any of this. They're trying to force you into the electric car. Watch what an expert had to say, but nobody wants to remember. Expensive gasoline, remember Vice that. President Biden, your response, and then we're gonna have a final question for both of you. My response is that those people live on what they call fence lines. He doesn't understand this. President Joe Biden seemed to praise high gas prices for causing a, quote, incredible transition from fossil fuels and towards green energy. During a joint press conference with Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida on Monday, Biden said that, God willing, the United States will be stronger as a result of record high fuel costs. Here he is. When it comes to the gas prices, uh, we're going through an incredible transition that is taking place that, God willing, when it's over, we'll be stronger and the world will be stronger and less reliant on fossil fuels when this is over. Biden's comments come as the national average gas price sat at $4.59 on Tuesday, up from $4.12 one month ago. Appearing on Fox News Channel's Hannity on Monday night, Senator Ted Cruz criticized the president for making that statement. Listen, $4.71 today is the average price of gas nationwide. Joe Biden isn't unhappy about that. He's in Tokyo celebrating, saying it's an incredible transition. It is the most arrogant contempt for working men and women in this country. And that is the view of the hard left. Let them eat cake. John Kerry, as he flies his private jet all over the globe, says, gosh, you got to give up your pickup truck because I care so much about the environment. So that is what's going on exactly. All this has been designed to make you uncomfortable with your car and have to get rid of it in order to get an electric vehicle. Now. Do I like electric vehicles? In the long run, yes. Are they ready for mass consumption today? No. I just did a trip from Las Vegas all the way to Denver. I did not want to stop for 35 minutes at a Starbucks and sip a Frappuccino and wait for my car to charge. I was on the go, baby. And I need a car that can go five to 600 miles before each recharge. When you buy an electric car, you might get two, 300 miles. You might get four your first two years. What happens with your cell phone battery after you owned it for two years? Ooh, it doesn't hold up as well. Then you're four or five years in, you can't buy a brand new Tesla or Volt, and now you can only get 180 miles on each charge. Ooh, things are getting weird. The bottom line is electric vehicles eventually will be the future. Less emissions, always good. But what does it take to make an electric vehicle? More pollution, more mining, more disruption to the environment, and when it's time to dispose of the battery, as of today, net, net, you have worse environmental reactions due to the electric car than the old standard. But I am still for environmental and I'm still for electric vehicles in the long run. We're just not ready today. There was a time when half the Americans had horses and half had nothing. And then people started getting cars, right? And so the people with horses thought maybe it's time to get a car. Well, there's not a lot of roads yet. We're not quite ready yet, but I definitely can see the value of a car. If Biden had been president at that time, he would have come in with a gun and shot all your horses. Pow! Poof! Come on, man! We're going to the future! Let's kill your horse and you just get a car! We are going to get a car. Let us naturally do it. We don't need big government's help.
We'll be right back with a whole lot more. Tell me if you agree, disagree, and if you hate me in the comments.